In this video, I'm going to show you how to improve your balance with one simple exercise and a couple variations that'll go from basic to advanced. This exercise doesn't require any special equipment. You don't have to get down on the floor. Everything is going to be from a standing position and it's going to help you build muscle in your hips and even in your legs, depending on how you do it. So if you're ready, let's get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. So if you're a senior and you're trying to improve your balance or you're just somebody whose legs and hips have gotten deconditioned and you really wanna work on that to improve your balance, this video is gonna help you out a lot. I'm gonna show you a very simple thing that you can start working on to improve your balance. And before we get started, I wanna make sure you understand that balance isn't just about like random circuitry having to practice and use this weird balance circuit in your brain. It's only kind of that. The thing people often forget and they don't really appreciate is that muscles in your legs and hips have to function in order for you to have good balance. Even if your brain knows what's supposed to happen, if you don't have the muscle to create the forces necessary to stabilize your body, all that's gonna happen is your brain is gonna say, hey guys, fire, 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 but nobody's there to help and guess what? You fall over. So to make sure you have good balance, to improve your balance, you need to make sure that the muscles around your hip joint, the muscles in your legs, your knees, your ankles, know how to work. So this exercise is gonna help you train that so your brain and your muscles can help you maintain your balance. So to start, let's get next to a wall, and if you'd like, you can have another piece of furniture, a chair, or something to help you stay extra stable. You're gonna lift one leg. I've got my left hand on the wall, I'm gonna lift my right leg, and then just gonna hang out here. See if you can do this for 30 seconds. If you can, awesome, that's a good place to start. If you cannot, then you know that you wanna work up to being able to hold this position for 30 seconds. Now, a lot of people will tell you to just keep practicing this and then hopefully you'll get better and better at it. But I'm gonna do you one better and I'm gonna show you some exercises you can do from this setup so that you can build the muscle so that it will speed up the process of improving your balance for doing this kind of position. Before we jump into the exercises, let's test the other side, hold on to the wall, hold on to whatever, and then see, can you hold it for 30 seconds? If you can't, it's okay, just notice that and then work on improving that over the coming weeks. So let's talk about the exercises you can do to build up the muscles around your hip joint that are gonna help you balance. So first off, I'm gonna show this with my left side. So my left leg is down, my right leg I can hold up or you can just have it just slightly off the ground. You don't have to have it way up and out here, just wherever it's not helping you balance, okay? Then you want to start pushing the pelvis towards the wall and then fire the muscles out here on the side of your hip. These muscles, fire those to push the hips away. So your pelvis is going in, then you're firing those muscles to push away. In, push away. Slowly in. So you may feel some stretch here and then fire and push away. You're gonna keep doing this until you can actually feel those muscles working. Hopefully, you feel those muscles fatigue because if you feel those muscles fatigue, you know they did some work and you know it's gonna be good for you. As these muscles get worked more and more and they get stronger, they're gonna help you stabilize when you're trying to balance on one leg. Like I mentioned earlier, when you're balancing on one leg, the hip muscles are the ones that are controlling what happens. So if these outer hip muscles are really atrophied, which they are on a lot of people, they're not gonna be able to help you when your pelvis starts to shift to the side. If these muscles aren't strong enough, guess what happens? You just topple over. So we're gonna keep doing this exercise until you feel like those muscles are tired. That could be 10 reps, that could be five reps, it could be 20 reps. You're gonna have to pay attention to what your body says, and then once they get tired, go ahead and rest. Take 30 seconds and then switch sides. Do the other side, it's gonna be the exact same thing. You can play around with how far you go into that bend. You can move your foot away from the wall. Just find different positions and angles to challenge your hip muscles so that they are ready, they're prepared. This is like doing a drill, right? Like these muscles need to learn how to fire, how to activate in a lot of different angles. So you can just play around here, find the angle that feels challenging, and then get some fatigue in the outer hip. 
Once you've done that, we're gonna work on the muscles of the inner thighs. These hip muscles here have to be able to stabilize you because what happens if you start going this way? If your body starts going this way, your inner thigh muscles need to be able to fire to close that angle back down. But most of us never use those muscles. So here's how we're gonna train them. We're going back on the left leg, hold on to the wall with your right hand. Then you're gonna let the pelvis go this away. So you'll notice that this angle is opening up and then we're gonna fire those inner thigh muscles to pull ourselves back to the start position. So this is just like that first exercise, but we're really working on the inner thigh muscles this time, opening that angle and then firing to pull ourselves back. Again, we can play around, you can experiment, you can bend a little bit, you can move your hips this way, that way, you can be leaning forward or back, whatever works, anything that just feels really weak and just not well balanced, keep working that until you get some fatigue. And before I forget, I wanna say thanks to Maddie T for the comment that inspired this video. Thank you so much. And if you have an idea that you wanna see in a video, be sure to comment down below. I wanna take one second to say a thank you to a bunch of people who gave via PayPal. Flying Monkeys, Michelle Z, Keints M, Darlene F, Tanya A, Andrea H, and Laura F. I really appreciate you sending money via PayPal to support this channel. I really appreciate it. If you're watching this and you'd like to support this channel too, use the thanks button here on YouTube or the PayPal link in the description box. Let's get back to it. Again, could be five, could be 20, whatever number of reps it is, just keep going until you get that bit of fatigue. Stop, rest 30 to 60 seconds, and then back to the other side. So standing on the right leg, same thing. We're gonna be going into what's called abduction, opening up that angle fire the inner thigh muscles to pull you away. If you can, special bonus, don't use your hand at that end position so you're getting extra practice of just holding and balancing that uh, one-legged stance position that we were talking about before. And as you do this, you're gonna be fatiguing these inner thigh muscles, training the inner and outer hips and all the other hip muscles to balance you. Whoop, pow. And finally, I'm gonna have you face the wall. You're gonna have both hands on the wall, right leg up, left foot, left leg, that's the stance leg. You're going to fire with your left butt cheeks. It's like you're trying to push the wall over. So you're pushing into the wall, you're really trying to push the wall over, feeling this contraction here. If you have a friend nearby, have them poke your butt. They should feel butt cheek firing up. If you don't feel any butt muscles there, then you need to do more butt exercises and I'll drop some links in the description box later. You can watch them after you finish this video. So you're gonna just keep holding this contraction, keep holding this contraction for about 30 seconds and then we're gonna switch sides. So come down, right leg, and then fire those butt cheeks or that butt cheek, that right butt cheek. Try to push that wall over. You're pushing, pushing, pushing. If you wanna get more push, you just move away from the wall with the right foot and keep pushing, pushing, pushing and keep feeling for that right butt cheek. The goal here is to be able to fire your hip extensors, your butt cheek, and you're just gonna keep going and then relax. Why is this important? Because this big rump roast is responsible for keeping you upright. If these muscles are not there and you can't fire them and you're trying to balance yourself and you're starting to go forward, what's gonna pull you up if not your rump roast? Nothing, all you're gonna do is go, oh no, and then crash into the floor. So with all of these exercises, the goal is to make sure you feel the right muscles firing and then make sure you work them enough to feel a bit of fatigue. You don't need to work them super hard. You don't wanna cripple yourself with soreness. Work them enough to feel like, hey, they did some work and then enjoy the benefit in the next day, two days, or three days. By doing these exercises, you are teaching your brain and your butt and these other hip muscles to work together to keep you standing. The more you practice these exercises, the more these muscles get strong and get coordinated, the better off you're gonna be and the more balanced you're gonna be without having to do any crazy things like close your eyes or hum your favorite tune or tap your head while making a circle on your belly. These exercises should not be particularly taxing. You don't wanna be feeling like, oh my God, I can't walk after doing these. You wanna make sure you're staying within a reasonable range, so don't overdo it your first week or two weeks. If you're just starting, I would suggest doing these once every other day or once every two or three days so that you have enough space to recover in case your body is really shocked by this new kind of work. As you get used to these exercises, you can do them more, but just make sure you don't cripple yourself with soreness. 
doing one to two rounds on the days that you're doing this exercise is a really good idea. And then every single day, make sure you're practicing standing on one leg and practicing that balance so that your brain and your body realize that you want everybody working together to improve your balance. Improving your balance is going to take practice and it'll take some time and building the muscles to help you balance your body is going to speed up that whole process. Just remember that it is a skill and having hip muscles is going to help you build this skill much faster. If you want more exercises to build your hip strength so that your balance improves faster, then be sure to check out these videos that I'm going to link right here. If you want to support my channel, use the thanks button here on YouTube or the PayPal link that you'll find down below. Like, share, and subscribe, and as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't.